Well, the connection uh, started when uh, Luis uh, Rodriguez sent a very promising graduate student to Berkeley to work with me, Dr. Susanna Lozano. So uh, that's been a wonderful experience for me. She's a wonderful researcher and person with excellent personal skills and great all-around scientist and administrator. So we've continued our collaboration uh, for all these years. Um, we have a small group in uh, theoretical astrophysics, and we typically used to meet once or twice a year. Sometimes it would be here, uh, sometimes it would be in Italy, sometimes it would be in California, sometimes it would be in Taiwan. Uh, in addition, uh, we had at one point a very um, unconventional idea concerning what drove outflows, bipolar outflows in star forming regions. And we needed observations to do that. And Luis Rodriguez was a principal collaborator in that, uh, in that effort, which was very successful and uh, helped we think, to change many people's ideas about, at that time, concerning outflows from, from young stars. In recent years, um, my attention has turned more toward climate change and energy problems. So um, the, I continue to see them as friends, but uh, the scientific and technical collaboration uh, uh, continues only to the occasional uh, projects where they think I should get involved <laughs> in astronomy. But I'm hopeful of getting them involved, at least partially, in these problems of, these great social problems of our age. And uh, I think, I hope uh, also to collaborate with more of the people in UNAM more generally. Well, I think. Um, Many people think uh, that Mexico uh, doesn't have resources, whatever, but actually, in my opinion, Mexico has many advantages that other countries do not, and uh, can, with sufficient will and a little bit of funding, okay, uh, take, I think, leadership position in this. The, the will is there, at least if you look at the vote in the uh, Senate. Uh, whether this will carry through beyond, you know, uh, good words remains to be seen. But at least I think Mexico starts with very good position. It's really very commendable. Well, so we need to make a transition from being a uh, consumer and burn and uh, combustor, I should say, of uh, fossil fuels to one uh, where uh, we don't use them to burn, but to make things out of durable goods. Well, Mexico has a, a good supply of oil. You, you have to have a transition. You have to have both the starting state and the final state. Other people uh, are just talking about not using other people's oil. But uh, Mexico has this resource that it can tap from. To do this, in the case of bioenergy, you are a major producer of many uh, fruits and vegetables in the world. It's, uh, you use a lot of uh, vegetable oil, which I pointed out is a basic feedstock for biodiesel. I think there are many opportunities here where it doesn't have to cost money. If you do things correctly, it can actually make money. And so you have this ability, flexibility, to convert from one kind of economy to another kind of economy. An economy which I think is not only cleaner for the environment, but in fact which has better jobs for people. Right? When you're not exploiting resources, but you are making, you're improving things. I think solar is, uh, as an astronomer, one cannot dislike solar. So I like solar. Uh, I think it is a wonderful um, peak load source of electricity. Namely, in countries, warm countries like Taiwan or uh, Mexico, the peak electricity demand is actually around noon. 
okay? Solar is obviously well matched with that. There's not so much solar at night, but usually people are asleep at night. So it's not bad. Much better than wind. Wind is just the opposite. So I'm not a big fan of wind. Wind works because you have temperature differences, either in time or in space, that lead to pressure differences that causes wind to blow. So the biggest temperature difference is from day to night. The air cools down, it settles as it cools. When it meets the ground, it spreads and you get wind. But that's exactly when people are asleep. So wind, I don't think, is nearly as good as solar, okay? It's cheaper today, but I think the long-term potential is less. So I'm actually a fan of uh, solar to reduce the amount of uh, more conventional sources of uh, power, such as from nuclear reactors or from biofuels, okay? Those are good for base load, you know, what you have as an average. But when you peak, it would be best to pick it up with solar if you can. Then you don't need to build so much base load. Oh, I think uh, it has um, had a remarkable history of becoming international class in a very short period of time. It's uh, similar, and because I know many of the principles, been a similar kind of history as, uh, as uh, we experienced in Taiwan. And basically for the same reason, because it was a decision to focus on something which the people involved could do well. And that was radio astronomy as a centerpiece supplemented by theory and other areas. But they had a focus, and I think that focus was a very wise choice. We made the same decision in Taiwan. Um, radio astronomy, this is again a personal view, I think differs from other areas of astronomy in that the people in it are fundamentally very collaborative, very friendly. And that makes for a very big difference in just the pleasantness of doing things and working together so that the sum is greater than the, just the parts. Oh, I think it's already recognized as one of the premier centers for radio astronomy and star formation and various areas of uh, astrophysics. Um, I think it can also set an example in the following sense for other fields. Luis Rodriguez had a vision of how to build up astronomy in Mexico meant, uh, 20 years ago uh, and more. And that was to send your best students, the most ambitious ones, to whatever, right, to different places to learn how to do things at, at the highest level. And those people came back because there was opportunity for them in places like Korea. <clears throat> that is what Mexico needs to do to upgrade its economy. Right now, Mexico has an economy largely based on exploiting natural resources. You know, to reach that next level without degrading the environment, one must be able to climb the knowledge chain. And that's exactly what's needed. Okay, astronomy, I think, can set a wonderful role exam model for how to do international collaborations, how to send students abroad to learn so that they can bring back that knowledge, and then, you know, to bootstrap the country into a fundamentally different knowledge-based rather than resource-based economy.